this is our view out of our room right now. The rain has let up a little bit. It was coming down really hard. For those of you who've been to, uh, stayed at the Fontana Village before, that's where the pool used to be. And uh, looking out from the main lodge back to the garden rooms. For us and uh, what we're doing today is the question, um, we're actually thinking about taking a zero. Not that uh, this is that bad, but it's supposed to come back into thunderstorms this afternoon. And there's a question of whether we can get up to a tent site before that. Probably not. And, uh, yeah, we'd be hiking or, or trying to set our tent up in a thunderstorm. Don't mind a little rain, but uh, I really don't want to be in a thunderstorm. So we're really looking at our plans, maybe taking a zero today. This is a nice place to stay. And uh, I'll just edit videos and do stuff like that. Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> not the best office environment um this uh room that we're in is a the room is great i mean i i can't say enough about the changes that the fontana village has done really nice place but the rooms don't have a place to work um so i've been working from my laptop in bed and uh yeah it's not not great but it'll do That's the start of my morning. More coffee and vegan sausage and some hash browns. All right, day 21. We're here at the uh, Fontana Dam. We're at the top of the dam. Obviously, we're at the bottom. Um, um, there's Fontana Lake. And we're preparing to enter the Smokies. On the other side of this dam is the start of the Smokies. Which is uh, it's going to be interesting because we're going to be spending the next four days going through the Smokies, hoping the weather doesn't turn against us. So there are those rules about the Smokies. You gotta not uh, you have to stay in shelters if the shelters available. Though so there is a dedicated tent site. Alright, the view from the top of the dam, there's the visitor center, and uh, yeah, the hydro plant, uh, electric plant, the hydroelectric plant, the other place that we park down there when we bring cars here, yeah. Thank you so much for all you do for the hikers. And all right, so uh, back on the subject of trail legs, uh, we've been climbing up this mountain uh, about a quarter mile. Been a pretty steady up, sometimes gradual, sometimes not, and I haven't stopped at all, which is different for sure. So I feel like again I'm. We're getting the trail legs. All right, so we're 1.3 miles in. The, the climb, according to my far out app, the initial climb is pretty much straight up a mountain to the top, about a 3,000 foot climb. That's pretty gnarly. I mean, it's not been bad so far, but uh, that's a lot of climbing to start off the day. All right, we're at the top of something called with a tent site, and uh, yeah, I'm getting ready to keep heading up the hill.
Okay, we're here at the open ledges. And it's pretty cool. These like rocks covered in moss and all these colors. Some water coming down. But the coolest thing, check out the views. Yeah, that's awesome. And it just goes on. It goes way up the hill too. You can see this rock formation. Oh shit. Oops. Alright. Must be careful. Almost died. Should make a comp compilation video of Chase almost dying. Spots on the AT. See the tower? It's a tall one. They call it the shuck stack. I don't know why. We're taking a blue blaze to go see the shuck stack. All right, we're climbing shuck stack. Shuck stack fire tower. First and best view of the Smokies. Awesome. All right. Three ice cream sundaes at the top. <laughs> I heard there was a barista. No? <laughs> nice iced coffee. Oh, yeah. Well, it's kind of open. Woo! All right. I'm going to keep going. Just a little queasy being up this high. Woo! It just keeps going. It's been fun though. It's worth it. Definitely worth it. It's cool. Yeah. As some of you may know, um, my mom passed away uh, two years ago. And uh, in her memory, and as a tribute to her, um, kind of dedicating, I am dedicating this, uh, this hike to her. So along the way, I'm carrying a very small urn, her ashes. Uh, it's a pretty lightweight urn, but it's an urn. Um, so, um, yeah, so today is the day, I don't know if anniversary is the right word, but today is two years to the day that she passed on. So, shout out to my mom. Hope you're watching. And, uh, yeah. So, I, I should say a few things about my mom that... She was not your normal person. <laughs> I guess a lot of us aren't normal, but um, yeah, she came over from Japan. She's uh, she come from a I've been told a line of samurai, and she definitely had that spirit. Um, she came over about 1959, I think, and um, yeah, I, I recall even as a very young kid. Um, 
you know, she barely spoke the language. Uh, so we were learning, it's funny because we were growing up learning both languages, Japanese and English. Um, eventually forgetting for me most of the Japanese. Um, she would drive her friends around and they would, uh, and she mainly wanted to learn how to drive a car. She's very headstrong, very, very willed person. And, um, so yeah, that was, uh, what kind of set her apart. I think to the detriment of their marriage, because I think my biological dad really thought he was getting your, your stereotypical Japanese wife who would let him do whatever he wanted. And she'd stay home and take care of things. And that was not her, and she was not having it. At age uh, six or seven, uh, my dad took off. Yeah, they told us they were getting a divorce, but he took off and, you know, he didn't pay child support. And I uh, saw him once again. He dropped by. I think I was 10. I never saw him again until the year he was dying, many years later. So anyways, that's not the point. The point is my mom was left in the country barely. At that point, you know, she'd been in the country a few years. and So she spoke English, but not well. Um, you know, as kids, we used to make fun of her, the way she said things. But, um, yeah, she was left on her own and to raise three children. And, uh, like I said, my brother was, I think, eight. I was six. My, do my sister was five. Um, you know, she got a job, if I recall right. She got a job at Denny's. She was working two shifts. We had moved back to San Diego from uh, Whidbey Island, Washington State. Um... And, uh, yeah, so one outcome of that was we pretty much were on our own most of the time because she was working. So, you know, at the ages of five, six, seven, eight, we all, um, you know, we'd ride our little bicycles down to the grocery store, buy some food, bring it back, make us dinner, and, uh, you know, then put ourselves to bed. And it wasn't every day, but it was a lot of it was like that. And, uh, now the positive is that it fostered a sense of independence. But my mom... She just kept going. She never complained. She never said a bad word about my dad. She just kept working and supporting us and raising us. And then raising us when we were just really crappy teenagers, which many teenagers are, I guess. Um, so anyways, that was my mom. She's such a strong person. And this was shown as she reached her in her 80s. Um, you know, she kept just being that strong person, just doing stuff and never letting age slow her down much in fact uh you know a few years before she passed uh she had forgotten something and she had already shut the garage she was already shutting her garage door the automatic garage door opener and um she thought she would uh pull an indiana jones and kind of went running in and rolling under the garage door it didn't work um she got trapped and i think broke something like her hip and uh, laid there for two hours until the UPS guy came and rescued her anyways that's my mom had a lot of stories like that she she had I, I have just so much respect for the person she was and I hope I am you know ref a good reflection of her in that you know just and that's kind of where the AT ties into this because, you know, she just kept going. Even when it was hard, you know, she just kept going. And that's been my lifelong thing. So, you know, it's, it's kind of a samurai thing to just keep going. You know, to not let the small things or even bigger things slow you down or stop you. The other funny thing is, it's on the chase side of my family... You might have seen it referenced. The Chase motto for the family is Ne Sede Malus, which is basically Latin for don't let the little shit get you down. Just keep going. Endure. Do not cede to malfortune. So I find it kind of interesting that those two things came together. And here we are walk in the AT, which requires you to, in their words, embrace the suck. Because there are many days that it's going to suck. And you just keep going. 
So, yeah, that was my mom. And uh, this, uh, this day is a tribute to her, especially. This hike is a tribute to her. I said I'm carrying her ashes the entire way. I hope I can complete the trail in her honor. Anyways, that's today. Talk to you later. The trail Alright, we're hanging the bear bag on a bear cable. It's our first time using bear cables. But apparently can't do it with one hand. Okay, so these are pretty easy. You just, it's like a pulley and you pull it up and then you hook. It's on this side? Or is there one on that side too? Yep. No, it's on. Hey y'all, we're in uh, we're in our tent. Um, I don't. Oh yeah, we're at Molly Ridge Shelter. Yeah, kept used to thinking it was Molly Ringwald Shelter, but it's Molly Ridge Shelter. We climbed out of uh, Fontana Dam. There's a lot of people here. Um, you know the rule here in the in the Smokies is you have to stay in the shelter. Unless the shelter is full, but there's been like, I don't know, 10, 12 tents scattered around the shelter and just a few people inside. So it is what it is. I don't know. Um, so today we hiked, uh, I think, 12 and a half miles. And, uh, but the big thing was we hiked up uh, like 4,500 feet, which I think is the biggest elevation climb we've done so far. And I can tell you that it just about wiped me out. It was tough. It was really tough. The uh, modifications to my pack um, definitely helped. Um, I think I need to tweak on that a little bit, maybe when I get home uh, during our break, which is coming up in eight days or something. And uh, But it was all in all a good day. The weather was awesome. And, uh, you know, I met and talked to some cool people. And uh, had some uh, pad thai, vegan pad thai for uh, dinner. And uh, yeah, that was very tasty. Um, I think that is Mountain House. I don't know. But uh, yeah, it, it was good. And um, yeah, we're turning in early. It's not even 7.30, I think, and uh, just calling it. Um, yeah. Uh, it, for those paying attention, that's probably nobody, but... Um, I, I've been trying out different pillows every time I go out. I, I brought like seven. And uh, I can tell you, I really like this one. So I'll do a review of the different pillows. But this one is really nice. Um, it's it's a fatty, uh, which is great for side sleepers like me. Um, I like it. So uh, and it's got a foamy surface. Anyway, like I said, I'll do a full review of the different ones. Um, we're on a pretty level ground, which is nice for a change. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a nice little breeze here. It's, it's just a really nice little area. So yeah, not a lot to video today. Um, again, it was the more the most important thing for me was the kind of tribute to my mom. And uh, yeah, that was uh, that's her day today. Tomorrow we have another uh, 12 mile hike. And um, and then I think a 10 mile hike. And uh, that'll bring us to Klingman's Dome where we'll meet the band again. We were gonna do a, f split this up into four days. I think we're gonna do three days now, but that is why we pushed it today instead of stopping at the tent shelter.